Hello everyone and welcome back and welcome to Forensic Extract and today we will be discussing about an important topic that is drowning. So drowning is first of all the definition of drowning. So drowning is defined as the respiratory impairment, respiratory impairment due to entry or the aspiration of fluid into the airway so entry of fluid in the airway as a result of submersion or immersion in liquid so this is the definition of drowning as a result of submersion or immersion so drowning is respiratory impairment as a result of entry or the aspiration of fluid into the airway as a result of complete submersion or immersion in the liquid. Now the point to be noted is that complete submersion, complete submersion is not necessary. This is not required in case of drowning. So now the types of drowning so types of drowning are first is the wet drowning in which fluid enters into the lungs into lungs fluid has entered into the lungs and second type is the dry drowning dry drowning in which fluid does not enter into the lung so fluid does not enter into the lung fluid has entered in the wet drowning but it has not entered into the lung in case of dry drowning now first is wet drowning so wet drowning is further classified in can be due to sea water and can be due to fresh water can be due to seawater or can be due to freshwater drowning. Now there is a difference between freshwater drowning and seawater drowning. So what happens in freshwater drowning? As we all know that freshwater is having hypotonicity. So due to hypotonicity, freshwater enters into the lung and due to its hypotonicity uh, there is hemodilution there is hemo dilution because fluid enters into the blood from uh, lungs and that hemodilution leads to hemolysis hemolysis and release of potassium that causes hyperkalemia increased concentration of potassium and that increased concentration of potassium is responsible for cardiac arrhythmias cardiac arrhythmias like ventricle fibrillation and death so this uh, this is the mechanism of death in case of fresh water drowning and what happens in case of seawater drowning as we all know that water uh, this uh, seawater is hypertonic so hypertonic water enters into the lung and fills the lungs and airway so water moves from blood to lungs blood to lungs this causes hemo concentration hemo concentration and that is responsible for pulmonary edema and then respiratory failure so these are the mechanisms of death in case of seawater as well as fresh water drowning so this is wet drowning then something about dry drowning so dry drowning what happens once a fluid or liquid enters in pharynx pharynx or upper airways there is a reflex reflex glottic or vocal cord spasm vocal cord spasm so this reflex 
spasm is responsible for asphyxial death asphyxial death so there is reflex glottic spasm or vocal, uh, vocal cord spasm in case of dry drowning now third one is the hydrocution or immersion syndrome so what happens in hydrocution or immersion syndrome there is cold water cold water this cold water stimulates peripheral skin receptors peripheral receptors of skin receptors so due to stimulation of peripheral uh, receptors or on epigastrium the vagus nerve endings on epigastrium there is vagus vagal stimulation so vagus now is stimulated and that causes cardiac inhibition or cardiac arrest cardiac arrest so basically it's a misnomer vagus now is not inhibited vagus now is stimulated and that leads to cardiac inhibition so that's why it is known as vagal inhibition so this is the mechanism of death in case of hydrocution or immersion syndrome now the secondary drowning so secondary drowning or the post immersion syndrome post immersion syndrome so this is secondary drowning in which death is due to secondary complications secondary complications and secondary complications can be metabolic acidosis can be electrolyte imbalance electrolyte imbalance and can be infections like pneumonia so death is due to these secondary causes in case of secondary drowning or post immersion syndrome now the fatal period in case of drowning roughly the fatal period in case of fresh water drowning is between 4 to 5 minutes and in case of sea water drowning the fatal period is between 6 to 10 minutes so this is the fatal period in case of drowning death is slightly earlier in case of fresh water drowning as compared to sea water drowning now the important findings post mortem findings of drowning so on post mortem the external findings external findings are first and foremost is the clothes will be wet and the mud and some some uh, silica particle and the uh, some other foreign bodies may be seen over the body and the important finding that is known as cadaveric spasm cadaveric spasm so what is cadaveric spasm it is due to struggle struggle there is grass of uh, grass weed or some stem by a person who is submerged into the uh, water so this is considered as most specific most specific sign of anti mortem drowning so cadaveric spasm or instantaneous rigor is seen in only one group of muscle and this is seen in a person who is dying due to drowning and uh, there may be sudden spasm of a single group of muscle so this is considered as most specific sign of antimortem drowning now the second sign there, uh, there is froth and froth is froth is characteristically tenacious tenacious copious 
copious tenacious copious and like mushroom like froth mushrooming there mushroom will be there or external orifices so that is known as sham fig non the most so this is on the basis of a name champignon mushroom it looks like a mushroom uh, that is coming out from nostrils as well as mouth so that froth reappears after washing it away uh, or ju uh, ju just after compression uh, compression the chest wall so that uh, what is the mechanism for formation of this kind of froth uh, there is due to vigorous agitation increase mucus and water and some uh, surfactants also these are responsible for the churning effects and thus formation of froth so froth is characteristically seen in case of drowning this kind of froth is characteristic and froth can be seen in case of electrocution can be seen in organophosphorus poisoning in case of snake bites and some other uh, sudden deaths froth may be seen but this kind of froth is characteristically seen in case of drowning now the internal findings in the drowning so internal findings are first of all lungs lungs will be edematous edematous and voluminous so lungs will be edematous and voluminous and rib markings rib markings will be prominent as lungs are edematous and voluminous and balloon so these are the findings which will be seen on lungs and characteristics uh, characteristic hemorrhages these are known as poltoff's hemorrhages poltoff's hemorrhages these are seen on the anterior surface of lower lobe of lung classically seen on the anterior surface of lower lobe of lung these are due to rupture rupture of alveolar capillary alveolar capillary due to forced respiration so due to forced respiration there is a rupture of alveolar capillary that is responsible for these hemorrhages these are known as part of hemorrhages and obviously water will be seen in the stomach stomach and there is micro rupture in the gastric mucosa micro ruptures will be seen these are known as sahret sign micro ruptures will be seen in the gastric mucosa sahret sign and on putting the gastric content in a beaker we will notice the uppermost layer of froth or foam the middle layer of liquid and lowermost layer of solid so this test is known as riddler's test riddler's test this is also a test that is done in case of drowning now some other signs of drowning these are like hands or feet are like washer women's washer women's so washer women's hand or washer women feet due to imbibition of water into skin layers so water has entered into the skin layers so that's why there is uh, the washer women hands and washer women feet so it is helpful in determining time since death time since death because the changes that occurs due to entry of water into the skin layers so first of all within 3 hours the skin will be wrinkled wrinkled and within 12 hours the skin will be bleached bleached then after one day there is the skin will be soiled and after 2 to 3 days 2 to 3 days there is peeling of skin peeling so skin peeling occurs after 
two to three days or at two to three days. So by the rough estimation or rough determination of this time, we can uh, estimate the time since death by looking these uh, are the changes that occurs after death. Then one more sign that is known as cutis enserina, cutis enserina or goose flesh, goose flesh. So that is also characteristically seen in case of drowning due to contraction of erector pili muscle. So erector pili muscle, erector pylorem muscle. Now the diagnosis of drowning that can be done by different tests. So first is diatom test. Diatom test. So diatoms are unicellular, unicellular, they are ubiquitous and varies in species, size and shape and these are alkali as well as acid resistant, alkali and acid resistant as they are having silica coated wool. So that's why these are, uh, the diatoms are alkali and acid resistant and they are having radial symmetry, radial or axial symmetry. So diatoms are the unicellular species and uh, they are having radial or axial symmetry. Now, what happens in case of anti mortem drowning? What happens in case of anti mortem drowning? Water with diatom, water with diatom has entered into the airway, then alveoli, and then pulmonary capillaries, and then heart, and finally goes to distant organ, distant organs like bone bone marrow brain spleen kidney liver and all so diatom has entered into these tissues or organs so that's why the best source of diatom is the bone marrow taken from the femur bone so this is the best source femur bone but best source commonly from visceral organ is spleen So spleen is the best source among visceral organs, but the best source uh, among the bone is femur bone, bone marrow taken from the femur bone. Now what happens that we will take some part of uh, femur bone and we will take out the bone marrow, 5 to 10 gram of bone marrow and then mix that bone marrow with nitric acid or some detergent like sodium rhodocyl sulfate or proteinase enzymes or we can simply incinerate and make ash and then we can separate the diatoms and we will check the sediment under dark ground microscope or phase contrast microscope. So we can decide about the uh, species, types and shape of the diatom that is present in the uh, bone marrow or the body fluid. So this test is significant in case of di uh, diagnosis of drowning. Now this is the diatom test that is done in the live patient or the uh, anti in case of drowning when person was alive like anti mortem drowning and what happens in case of post mortem drowning? In case of post mortem drowning the water and diatoms has entered in the airway and alveoli and pulmonary capillary but from pulmonary capillaries the, uh, the water has not entered into the heart and organs so diatom will be absent in distant organs so absent in distant organs in case of post-mortem submersion. Now some other tests like the catalyst test, 
Gettler's test. Gettler was a scientist who compared the chloride concentration, chloride concentration between right and left side of heart. So what happens in case of fresh water drowning? The concentration of chloride in right heart, right chamber of heart is more as compared to left because of hemodilution, hemodilution. But in case of sea water drowning, sea water, the concentration of chloride in right chamber is less than the left chamber. So chloride concentration will be more in, a, in the left chamber of heart due to hemo concentration. So these are the findings which are seen in case of drowning. The test is known as Gettler's test. And we can also measure the strontium level as well as the uh, ma uh, magnesium level also. So these are newer tests. Now, what happens in case of drowning? There is sympathetic stimulation, sympathetic stimulation. So due to increased sympathetic activity, there is vasoconstriction. Vaso constriction leads to spasm of splenic trabeculae as well as splenic capsule capsule and trabecular spasm that is responsible for decrease splenic size decrease splenic size and it is known as Sabinsky's Sabinsky's sign decrease spin spleen size due to increase sympathetic stimulation in case of drowning that is known as Sabinsky sign so so far we have discussed different tests and the uh, actual as well as internal findings and types of drowning so this is all about drowning and thank you guys for subscribing forensic extract and please keep on sub uh, uh, keep on subscribing and please spread the videos as much as you can so thank you and please give your value your feed, uh, feedback so that I uh, improve the video qualities as well as the explanation skills. Thank you. Thank you so much.